Good morning, everybody. It's Brooke with Mrs. Coghill Farm, and today we're in the kitchen. As you all are aware of, we have a big holiday coming up here in the United States this week, and that is Thanksgiving. So, what better way to make a video and share one of my family's secret recipes, and that is for homemade macaroni and cheese. Here in the South, I don't know if this goes for most everywhere, but it, it's pretty much not a Southern Thanksgiving unless it has macaroni and cheese on the table. And my Aunt Linda has a recipe, a family secret recipe, that she has allowed me to share with you guys. And it's, it's my favorite. It's, it's, our, it's our family's favorite. And we're gonna cook that in my kitchen today and show you guys how we do it at our family Thanksgiving table. So before we get started, I want to make sure I have my oven preheated and that's gonna be to 350 degrees. So, there we go. Now let's get started. The second thing we need to do is to turn on a pot of water that we can boil the macaroni noodles in. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that started here. And what I use is the smallest size macaroni. I just feel like that works best and that's the tiny ones. It, it's your choice. If you would rather use shells or a large macaroni, do what works best for you and, and your family. But in my experience, the small macaroni noodles work best. So while we're bringing the, the water up to a bowl to add our noodles, I'm gonna go ahead and get some of my ingredients together. Overall, this is a very simple recipe that has lots of depth and flavor, phenomenal flavor. So it does require a white sauce. Don't be intimidated if you've never made a white sauce before because you can do it. It requires one stick of butter, three cups of milk, a third of a cup of self-rising flour, and as long as you stand over it and you continuously stir it, you're gonna be successful. And it wouldn't be macaroni and cheese without cheese. So I have go, gone ahead and grated one and a half blocks of the eight ounce cheese. I like to use the sharp cheddar. It's again, your preference. Uh, you could use any type of cheese here that you wanted, but I go ahead and grate it, and that is 12 ounces of grated cheese. While we're waiting on our water to come to a bowl for our macaroni noodles, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the white sauce. And as I said before, it's just a stick of butter. I'm gonna go ahead and get our burner on. You want this butter to melt before you add any of your other ingredients, which are flour, and milk. So our butter is melted and now I'm just going to add a little bit of the third of a cup of self-rising flour, a little bit of milk, and we are on our way to making a white sauce. A basic white sauce is used in a lot of recipes. And there are different ways that you can make it, depending on the quantity that you want and what you're trying to achieve. So you're just gonna continue to stir and add milk, alternating with flour, so that it doesn't get lumpy. With the heat on, that's kind of, uh, you gotta move kind of fast because it will get lumpy on you quickly if you're not attentive of it. I can hear our water's just about to the boiling point. I added a little bit more milk there so I can show you guys what it looks like. You can see the, the white sauce has gotten thicker and just be patient and add a little bit of flour and a little bit of milk and continuously stir. If you've never made homemade macaroni and cheese, do your family a favor and give it a try. I <laughs> love you for it. 
my aunt Linda described it to me when she first told me how to make this recipe is you want the white sauce to get about half the thickness of pudding when it's completely made up before it's refrigerated of course but just that that is the thickness that you're trying to achieve and once you do it a couple of times it it will come easy to you let's see what our noodle water is looking like oh yeah we got a rolling bowl going I'm going to add a generous amount of salt to the boiling water because I don't want to salt this at the end. And that's going to need to cook for about eight minutes. I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of my milk to my white sauce. Now as for the heat, you don't want your heat to be on super high heat. You just want a flame that will keep this cooking but not scald it. I do like to add just a little bit of salt to the white sauce, almost at the end. Okay, our white sauce is just about to the consistency that I want it. You can tell that it's getting much thicker. You can see that my, when my spoon runs through it, it just kind of picks it up a little bit. Just continuously stir it while you're cooking and you will come to that point as long as your ingredients are correct. Just got to give it time. Our noodles are ready, so now we're just going to drain these. So once your noodles are completely drained, you're now ready to assemble the macaroni and cheese. So you've got a greased 9 by 13 pan. You're going to pour your macaroni noodles into the bottom. Make sure they're distributed all over. You can see that it fills up the bottom of the pan. You've got your grated one and a half blocks of cheese or 12 ounces. You're going to cover your cooked noodles with the cheese. Now that your cheese is on the top, you got to put your white sauce on. And as the white sauce thick sits, it will thicken even more. It will get kind of a skim coat on the top of it. So just stirring around and you're back to where you started, but you can see the thickness of it. See that's coating the spoon and you're going to pour that white sauce over the top of the cheese to make sure it's completely covered. At this point, you are not going to stir this. No matter how bad you want to, you're not gonna stir it. You're gonna make sure that the white sauce is completely covering the top without stirring it. Look how beautiful. All right, we're gonna put it in our preheated 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes, and we're gonna check it. If it's if the cheese is melted, we're good. Some people like to have that brown on the top of it. And if that's the case, you just simply turn on your broiler and let it get brown on the top, but don't continue to cook it because it'll make the noodles a crunchy texture, which we're not after. All right, into our preheated 350 degree oven, 20 minute timer, and we'll check it then. While our macaroni and cheese is cooking, I wanted to tell y'all what my plans are next. I am going to see if I can freeze dry this macaroni and cheese. We are five days away from Thanksgiving, so, this will be my first time attempting to freeze dry macaroni and cheese and see how it turns out. I want to know if I can take my leftovers from Thanksgiving. I'm doing this ahead of Thanksgiving just so I can share with you guys. But I want to know if I can take my leftovers from Thanksgiving, such as macaroni and cheese, sweet potato casserole, even turkey. We know we can do turkey because I've done chicken. But I want to know if I can freeze it and eat it again at Christmas time. So y'all stay tuned because we are going to freeze dry macaroni and cheese. All right, y'all see the bubbling around the edges. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. Oh, my camera's fogging up. But I added five more minutes just because I wanted it to be a little bit 
different than what it was. So 25 minutes is what I have cooked this for and I'm ready to get it out. Oh my gracious, it looks delicious. I don't know if all of this is gonna make it to the freeze dryer. We'll find out. It's getting close to lunchtime and uh, it's smelling mighty good. But you can see what I meant about if you want it brown on top, it'll create kind of a, a crunchiness that some people desire and some people don't. But since I'm freeze drying it, I'm going to do it just like it is and not put any kind of crust on the top. All right, so before I freeze dry it, I gotta give it a taste. I gotta show y'all what it looks like when it's, oh my gracious, look at that. Goodness. I know how good it is, but I just gotta. The best. Homemade macaroni and cheese recipe. There he is. <laughs> My macaroni and cheese has had a chance to cool off and now it's time to place the good stuff on the freeze drying trays. And I can only say that I hope it comes out of the freeze dryer as good as it goes in because I would hate for it to not be as appetizing after rehydrating as it is right now. I also made a mistake earlier. I said that you could freeze dry it and rehydrate it and have it again for Christmas. Well, that's too soon. Because you can, you can freeze something and it still be good a month later. But, what about 2048 Thanksgiving? You could have this dish again in 25 years, providing it stored in the Mylar bags provided by Harvest Right, and in 25 years, you can have this same dish again. That's just mind blowing to me. And I am gonna spread it out kind of thin because if you guys have had any experience with freeze drying or have watched other people do it, you know that when something is thick, it takes longer to dry. Uh, I don't know how many trays this is gonna take. I'm in, I was anticipating two but it may take more. Okay, so I went ahead and made two trays out of the one 13 by nine pan. And they're going in the freeze dryer. Second tray. Fingers crossed that this comes out as good as it went in. All right, I couldn't wait for the trays to warm, so I gotta move fast, cause they're cold. It looks like macaroni and cheese. It does. You know, I've heard of macaroni and cheese ice cream. Yeah. And I'm not willing to try it, but I am willing to try this without it being rehydrated, and I'm not expecting it to be very good. It's not as bad as what I expected. You know what it tastes like to me? What's it taste like to you? Cheese puffs. A cheese cracker. To me, it's got like a, a cracker. It does at the end. Yeah. Okay. That's not what we're after. No. We're trying to figure out if this is gonna taste like my Aunt Linda's mm -hmm. when it came out of the oven. So let me get some water and I'm going to rehydrate it. Okay, so have some warm water and I'm just gonna Add it to it and let it sit. And I'm thinking maybe five minutes or so. I don't really know how much water it's gonna take, but we're gonna find out. Okay, so I think I added a little more water than I should have, but I let it sit for at least five minutes. Probably a little longer, but let's give it a try. It's great. And you did pop it in the microwave too. For I a did second, pop it in the microwave because, just to heat it up. Because I like warm macaroni right. and cheese. And I must say, the reason I didn't heat up more than this is because I got to save it for Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I could eat the entire pan. Mm. All right, I'm going to let Jason give it a try and see what he thinks. I will say that I did heat it up for just a second. Because who wants cold macaroni and cheese, right? Right. 
What you think? That's pretty good, Brooke. It's really good, isn't it? That is. That is. That's good. That is. Macaroni and cheese, good. It is. It's uh, It's pretty close to the way it comes out of the oven. Very, 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 very close. Well, let's see what you got. Oh. <laughs> well, hmm. Okay, I don't think you're going to get any more out of that. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I didn't heat up more than what I did, isn't it? Because we wouldn't have anything left for Thanksgiving. <laughs> so, I have proven that my Aunt Linda's wonderful macaroni and cheese recipe can be put into a mason jar <laughs> and consumed any time we want it. I think that's going to be an asset. So, if you decide to make this recipe for your family and you want to keep it leftovers for Christmas, you can do that or you can have it for your family's Thanksgiving in 25 years. <laughs> whatever to, whatever route you decide to go, y'all use the link below if you decide to purchase the Harvest Right freeze dryer. It does help our family and they're only on sale through Black Friday. Mm -hmm.